Hello students, welcome to Diadme IS. I'm Zeba. I'm your faculty for labor law at Diadme IS. For your exam, upcoming exam of EPFO and A APFC, uh, the major me uh, discussion that we are going to be having today is going to be your specific PYQs. I have included some important PYQs related to uh, especially Factories Act 1948, then you have Maternity Benefit Act, and also the Payment of Wages Act. Uh, furthermore, and y what you can uh, you know see in this thorough uh, uh, like a quick uh, review of the questions would be that you will get an idea about the kind of questions come because there are so since labor law is definitely a very scoring subject, so you will understand it from uh, this from after seeing the PYQs from a better perspective also, and I have also been teaching the specific laws to all of you, so you are going to be uh, like for a, whoever is has uh, uh, you know completed those specific laws, you can uh, like respond to the questions also, and you are going to find the questions to the kind of uh, the way the questions are asked and what are the like the areas of importance that you have to give while preparing for these laws since it's an mcq based paper you don't have to go in much detail but still there are specific things spe related to each specific law that you need to keep in mind when you are preparing for your exam okay so let's quickly begin our class for today the first pyq i have included is factories act 1948 and the first question I've included, as you can see here also on the board, it says, in which year did Factories Act come into force? So if you can see this and you can understand this uh, also, the questions are more uh, the basic le level. The rigor level is simple one only. So you have to remember the date of each act when they were enacted. So for Factories Act especially, the date is 1st April 1949, clearly, right? So this is going to be our option and it's a very scoring que question also so you can easily attempt it right the second questions i have included here is now you will also see the variety of questions okay so the second question here is how many days in advance does the occupier of a factory premises does give notice of occupancy to the chief inspector before acquiring or uh, any specific location where the factory is going to be established there is very specific notification given by the occupier about the occupancy of that location right if you remember that uh, the duties of the occupier that we did that so you are going to be understanding that um, specifically uh, on the responsibilities and roles of an occupier here the specific uh, pre-notice that is given is 15 days prior to the establishment all right then the third questions I have included here is, as per the Factories Act, after how many years should the factory premises be painted and refurbished, right? So now what you can understand is that the question's level of rigor is very easy, definitely. But when you are preparing it also, the dates and that specifically, you know, the number of dates, the days, what is the roles and responsibilities of an occupier of chief inspector, you need to know that related to each specific law. Right? Please emphasize on that when you're preparing for your exam specifically. So for this particular question, if you clearly remember, we did that also in our class, and that is for at least after every five years, there has to be a repainting and the refurbishing of the factories. Right? Okay, let's move on. The fourth question here is, what are the general duties of an occupier right you have to remember all the specific duties try to be very like thorough with that when you're preparing it also i have uh, told you clearly how to prepare for the sections right the order in which you're going to be uh, learning them and the like the quick ways of remembering it also so that you are able to like completely attempt this question and score marks as well. So you need to write down and know all the roles and responsibilities. First it says, maintenance of a plant and system of work in factories are safe without risk to health. Then the second responsibility here it is saying is to ensure safety and absence of risk to health in use, handling, storage and transport of articles. 
Then the third C, C option they have given you is specifying the area, the location where the factory uh, or the en entire process of manufacturing is going to be conducted. And the D option they have given you here is defining the local mean time ordinarily deserved therein. Right. So if you can read this question and they have given you certain options, like whether it's option D, whether it's option C, A and B or all of the above. So if you remember, the roles and responsibilities of occupier is very much in alignment to the health right so specifying the area this is not the role and responsibility of an occupier so a and b very clearly you can see this here right so a and b options are going to be defined giving you the right answer and the most accurate answer if not going there so i'm writing it here only the fifth question students i have included is which provision regarding health are mentioned in the sections 11 to 20 in factories act we did, uh, you know, the se from section to 11 to 20, we specifically had a chart where we learned every section. And I even told you the ways uh, by which you have to learn and memorize them so that you don't get confused during your exam time, right? I hope you remember that. So specifically from 11 to 20, we did in a specific uh, like order also, ascending order also. So wha how you can prepare for this is basically, let me just give you a little idea. So write down the name, number of the section, let's say, and then try to map it out to the specific, you know, uh, provision regarding that, okay? So for this particular thing, we have done that. It, it, from section 11 to 20, it starts with cleanliness only. Cleanliness, dust, fume, ventilation, temperature, disposal of waste. We did all of them, right? So specifically for this question, the answer would be option D, all of the above, right? Okay. The eighth question that we have from Factories Act 1948, I think now you you will are you getting a clear idea about the kind of question, the versatility of questions, right? The first is match the following. So this particular question is match the following. This is the first match the following I've included here. So if you ha remember the sections specifically, it's asking about the approval, licensing, and registration of factories. Very important provision that we did. Then it is asking about the next is about the arrangement of drinking water, then the maintenance of buildings, right? Then we also have protection of ice. We did that also in our class. So what you can do is you have to like match it up. So if you can clearly see the closest answer for here is for first, we have section six for the registration, right? And once you know one is six, so how we are going to be like you optimally utilizing your time. So you know that the, either the answer is going to be this or the answer is going to be this. Then you quickly jump on to the second one. That's the easiest way to attempt such questions. So arrangements of, for drinking water, you clearly remember that we did that also in our class when we did that map. So, drink, uh, so drinking of water is related to section 18. So now you clearly know that amongst one and C, option A is right. So now you don't have to like continue further and complete also. Of course, the other options are matching. Maintenance of building is definitely to option uh, section 14A and protection of I is related to section 35. You know that now clearly. So the prop answer is now clearly here and option A, okay? Then question number nine students, as per section 94, a person who repeats an offense he shall be punished with an imprisonment or for a term which may exceed <coughs> which may exceed extend up to dash years and fine which shall not be less than rupees 10,000 but but may exceed extend up to dash or both so here the clearest answer that we have is if you remember that the uh, we did it also in our um, class also where we were talking about section 94 right
right so let's do question number 9 as per section 94 a person who repeats an offense so repeats an offense he shall be punished with an imprisonment of a term which may extend up to dash years and fine which shall not be less than 10000 rupees but which may extend up to dash or both so here if you clearly remember we did that if there is a repeated offense that happens from the side of an occupier so he or she, she will be hold you know um, very much accountable for the fact that there this has been this has been a repeated offense right so in that uh, case we clearly have also studied about this that the imprisonment goes up to 3 years and the fine is between a, of range from 10000 to 2 lakhs okay so here that option of 3 years and 2 lakh is at or option number a clearly right now the last question for factories act that i have included that is section 99 of factories act deals with which of the following options a appeal penalty for permitting double employment of a child display of notice penalty of for obstructing inspectors we did that also if you remember when we were doing that that what are the clauses which are which are related to uh, you know um, having an adults in working in a factory so under those uh, specific guidelines we have uh, studied this that section 99 of factories act talks about penalty for permitting double employment of a child a child is going to be working specifically for 4.5 hours a day and there will be no uh, like uh, double uh, employment given to a given to a child no overwork and specifically they are they are very strict in regards to the employment of an adolescent right because they have considered in for in in context of that for different parameters like like there's a clear difference between an adult employee and an adolescent deploy okay so now i think you have got a very clear idea about the kind of questions that are asked definitely there are versatile questions and but they are definitely easy also the level of rigor is basically easy to medium i won't say that it is completely like medium to high but definitely the questions are for labor law it is ma majorly simple to me uh, sorry uh, easy to medium so you have to like the questions have given you a like a gist about the way you have to prepare for it also right so now let's move on to another act and that is going to be your maternity benefit act
so we did this clear definition if you have seen that also and we did that as a part of appropriate government right so appropriate government means in relation to an establishment right being a mine or anything in accordance to and that this is specifically talking about under the maternity ba benefit act 1961 so you need to be very well versed with that definition okay in the maternity act an inspector is appointed under which section so the appointment of an inspector is definitely done under section 14 okay what is the maximum period for which any women is entitled to uh, to maternity benefit we have done that also from 12 to 24 weeks so basically the minimum number of weeks is going to be 12 okay then how many weeks in advance a written notice for maternity leave has to be given to the employer by an expecting woman so if the expecting woman has to give a pre notice to the employer so beforehand so that he know or the occupier knows that this person or this female worker is not going to be uh, pre present for some time so that advance notice is given 7 weeks prior the um, the prior she starts taking her leaves right so for this also specifically in maternity benefit act you need to remember the specific timeline timelines that what is the time period minimum time period uh, time period required for uh, her to take maternity uh, leaves what is the maximum right in case of a miscarriage what is the uh, uh, extension of um, uh, leaves that are given what are the other benefits right so you need to be very specific with the timeline specifically in accordance to the benefit maternity benefit act 1961 till what age of the child will a mother gets nur two nursing breaks in the course of her daily work we did that also when we were doing crutches right so in crutch when there is a uh, there are two nursing breaks given to each female employee up to the age when the child is up to which age so that is the question it, it is asking so for a daily work definitely the two nursing breaks are given up to up for a for a mother whose child is up to 15 months okay we did that also specifically as per section 18 if an employer discharges or dismisses a woman during or in account of her absence from the work during the maternity leave then what is the punishment faced by an employer so we have done that also that usually the um, you know the, the it becomes a responsibility of the employer to ensure that if the female employee has taken the maternity leaves and in that case if by some other reason he or she dismisses her from the job then he will be held you know he will be held accountable for the fact that he is going to be punished for the fact right so for the clearly we did that also and the punishment was extended up to 3 months or more up to 1 year right then as per section 9 for how many weeks a woman is entitled for leave in case of a miscarriage so for in case of a miscarriage also we uh, have to remember the timeline so definitely uh, to heal the body and uh, to heal mentally also a woman needs certain time so in that case of a specifically in case of a miscarriage there is clear defini uh, defining of 6 week leave for which a woman is entitled in case of a miscarriage then the to state true or false section 17 describes the obligation of the employer under maternity benefit act is it true or is it false so we did that also the obligations of an employer so definitely this is not here in section 17 so it's going to be false you need to remember the section what is the account of medical bonus entitled to a women who is also entitled to receive maternity benefit the specific amount that they are asking you in case of the entitlement of to receive the money the specific amount is 250 rupees so you in case of so if you can see that also when you are preparing for this particular uh, act try to be memorizing the timeline and if any uh, you know money value or anything related to that that is there mentioned the timeline let, let's let's say the what uh, if in case of anybody who is violating the law what is the punishment so you need to remember that timeline for the leaves also you need to remember the specific timeline for anything in accordance to that you need to be very specific about the timelines and when it comes to the amount also that is in accordance to the offenses or any case of any other uh, be benefit especially for female workers here you need to remember the amount okay so i'm just telling you clear ways by which you can prepare it in a better way the last question we are having today is the mat for maternity benefit act 1961 
the maternity benefit act objectives were achieved by the enactment of factories act 1948 payment of wages act 1936 employment state Assur insurance act 1948 standing orders act 1946 if you clearly remember when we were doing uh, employee state insurance act of 1948 we clearly have learnt about it that is the part of that so enactment of that so definitely option c these options factories act gives you certain guidelines but it is not in a, an enactment to of that okay and payment of wages act is also just specifying little details about the fact for the female workers and standing orders act also is not in that much related in enactment so when it talks about specifically about the word enactment be very very clear of the fact it is talking about employee state insurance act 1948 right 